Here, in the heart of the Scottish Highlands, a few miles from Balmoral Castle, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother drives out from Birkhall, the house in which, as Duchess of York, she spent happy holidays with her husband, the future King George VI. Now she's off on a 70 miles journey to Perth for a day of royal ceremonial. But this is a personal occasion too, the celebration of a quarter of a century as Colonel-in-Chief of one of Britain's most famous regiments, the Black Watch. At the Palace of Schoon, the home of the Earl of Mansfield, Lord Lieutenant of Perthshire, the Queen Mother calls for lunch. Here, many of the Scottish kings were crowned. For the city of Perth, too, this is a family occasion. The Black Watch has traditionally recruited its soldiers from Perthshire, Angus and Fife, and Her Majesty has strong family links with the regimental area. A thousand years of history lie behind this scene. Balhousie yeah! Castle is the regimental headquarters and its museum presents the history of the regiment from 1739 to the present day. The badge and motto were granted in 1786. Nobody provokes me with impunity. When the Queen Mother leaves Balhousie for the parade, she is accompanied by General the Viscount of Arbuthnot, the Colonel of the regiment. On the North Inch, on the banks of the River Tay, the three battalions of the Black Watch are on parade. On the left and right are the two territorial battalions, and in the centre, the 1st Battalion, the regiment's one regular battalion in the new peacetime army. This is far more than an official function for the Queen Mother. It is a ceremony alive with memory and personal feeling. She became Colonel-in-Chief in 1937, the year of her coronation. Her brother, Captain Fergus Bowes Lyon, served with the regiment for five years and was killed with the 8th Battalion at Luce in 1915. Other members of her family have worn its uniform. The Black Watch is a family regiment. Almost every man serving in it has a family connection, a father, brother or uncle, who has also served. Some names occur generation after generation, and today there are many long service medals to be presented. As befits the occasion, many families are there to watch the ceremonial and to hear the Queen Mother's speech. The city of Perth, of which I'm a freeman, and proud to be, is always to be found flourishing on the banks of the Tay. The Black Watch is sometimes more difficult to find since it might be anywhere in the world, keeping the Queen's peace or fighting her battles. I therefore rejoice that on this day, the three battalions of the Black Watch and I and the city of Perth should all have come together here on the North Inch. And I repeat that this is a day which we shall all remember. The Black Watch on Ceremonial Parade is a bridge between the past and the present, between tradition and 20th century efficiency. But behind the ceremonial are the fun and games which make the regiment a real community. At the regiment's Highland Games, the most popular event with the spectators is the bandsman race. Men with the most awkward instruments are given a good start, but they must all play whilst running round the track. A typically Highland event is tossing the caber. So is the unusual way of throwing the weight, upwards. It weighs 56 pounds. The winner threw it over a bar 12 feet high. 
The colonel of the regiment, General Arbuthnot, and the commanding officer, Colonel Nigel Noble, were there to watch C Company demonstrating to D Company that they had just that little extra brawn and muscle which make all the difference. No Highland Games would be complete without piping. Or without Highland dancing. This is an intercompany dancing competition. But in today's ceremony, it is the disciplined feet which set the pace. The term Black Watch was originally a nickname for the Royal Highland Regiment. It arose from the dark coloured tartan which they still wear, and also from the fact that they were formed to keep watch on the Highlands, where many of the clans were still loyal to the exiled Stuarts. Two centuries later, King George V became the first Colonel-in-Chief of the regiment, to be succeeded by his daughter-in-law. Behind the ceremonial too is the tough training which keeps the Black Watch at the forefront of Britain's fighting men. Always, the commanding officer must keep his troops at the peak of fighting efficiency. Battle training must be realistic, for the Black Watch is one of Britain's frontline regiments, the teeth of her army. An attack is planned, orders are given. The softening up of an enemy position begins. Modern warfare moves fast, and whenever possible, the infantry is carried into battle in armoured personnel carriers. A far cry from the countless miles the regiment has covered on foot in over 200 years of battle-scarred history. Modern weapons too. Mortars, rocket launchers, automatic rifles. A long way from broadsword, musket, pistol and dirk. But the men remain the same. The tough, wiry men from Perth, Angus and Fife, who fought in Egypt and America, Spain and India who won glory for the regiment at Ticonderoga and Alexandria, at Quatre Bras, Luce and Ypres, in Crete and at El Alamein and in Korea. These men are ready, if ever they are called upon again, to bring new honour to their regiment. But today is a peaceful occasion. The regiment is on parade before its Colonel-in-Chief. On parade on the banks of the Tay, where the Black Watch held its first muster in 1740. Now, as then, each man knows that he and the regiment are a family concern. A personal affair in an age of mechanised weapons. It's a proud day for the city of Perth, a milestone in the history of the regiment. And this day of memories in the life of Britain's Queen Mother is another proof that, though times may change and machines become more perfect, the thing that really counts in the end is human relationships and a sense of belonging.